Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It. We are in week two of our January piece and if you're new here I will link the playlist at the top of the screen so that you can go back and catch up on what we did last week. So if you don't know what we're up to this year in Winging It each month we're going to create one complete piece over the weeks of the month and we're going to take some inspiration from what's happened in our lives what's happening in the world around us and so this month I thought we could make a landscape that reflects what's happening in the world wherever we are so last week we created our sky our watery sky and then we use some fabrics from our colour scheme to create the basic landscape that we're going to work with and we laid some chiffon or organza ribbon over the surface to create some water now you might have followed this along almost exactly There's some great things appearing on the facebook group you might have gone in a completely different direction and that's totally fine so what I thought we could do this week is start adding some stitch. Now part of what we did last week was we made some of our own custom thread and this was just cotton thread that we painted with watercolour paint so this isn't going to go through the washing machine or anything like that, it's just for our textile art. So. I've got that handy and I've also got my box of threads here that I've picked out that are all in my colour scheme and I've got all sorts in here. Some very fine threads, some more chunky, there is a couple of variegated in there and I might see if there's anything else that I might be able to find. There's lots of different materials as well so I've got some linen thread, I've got cotton, I've got some silk thread in here and I've got some stranded, some perle, there's all sorts of things going on there. I've got a bit of metallic here as well that I thought might be useful for the water, but we'll come to that in a minute. So I got a bit alarmed during the week about what we were going to do with our background and you might feel a little bit nervous I suppose about stitching into something particularly if you are quite happy with your background stitching can be quite a scary prospect for some people particularly when we're working with something like the chiffon ribbon that we don't want to over stitch we don't want to puncture it too many times so I thought I'd give you some ideas on how you could plan out what you're going to stitch before you get going so the first thing i did was scan my <laughs> piece of work so i literally just put this on my printer and pressed the copy button so you can either do it by scanning it or if you've got a printer copier you could just put it on the flatbed on the top and copy it so that's what i've done here and then you can just use a pen or a pencil so I've got a micron pen here to just experiment with different stitches so you might for example want to see what happens if you put some stitching on that follows the line of your hills your landscape so if I just wanted to put some borrow style stitching on my piece of work I might want to follow the shape of the piece that I've cut with my stitching and drawing on the picture actually gives you a bit of a sense of what effect that's going to create. So obviously I'm just using a black micron pen, I wouldn't stitch it in black particularly but it gives me a sense of the way that movement is created and what those lines are going to do to my piece of art so I can do that kind of thing and then maybe I would want to do some vertical lines somewhere else so and because this is further away in the distance I wonder what would happen if I put some vertical lines on this one 
what would that do to the movement in the piece. So if I went along this hill with some verticals, what does that do? And sometimes you are only going to find out by experimenting. And the good thing about doing this is that there's no one picking. It's very quick and you can see the effect your stitching is going to have. Now I think that makes that too leaden. So what if I did some sort of curves that go over the hill? like this. I wonder what happens then. And suddenly something very different is happening. So I can test out the effect of different lines. What if I make my lines get further and further away from each other? That kind of thing. So if I just bring the camera in a bit you can see that something very different is happening here to here and I can experiment with different widths of lines so what if I put in some thicker lines on the back what does that do so if I change the weight of my stitching what effect is that going to have so you can experiment so your heart's content with this because nothing's going to go wrong. You can just print out another one and you can just test out different things, see what happens. Another thing I've done is create a little stitch sampler without stitching anything. And I've done that with just some marks on paper. So I thought about the stitches that I tend to use most often. So straight stitch french knots, fly stitch, seed stitch and cross stitch. I think these are my go-tos for creating texture in piece of work and I've just played around with a pencil and a micron pen here and there just to see what different effects I can create with different stitches. So this is obviously running stitch worked vertically and then I played around with angles so what happens if I stitch in different directions what happens if I overlay different lines what happens if I put things horizontally so these look very stable this looks like it does look like rain it looks like this downward movement and this looks far more chaotic then I stitched in curves in different directions and I noticed that it does make quite distinct sections depending on which direction the stitch is going in. Then I thought about radiating lines so I started by making some little dashes at the centre and then worked them out and then added in some darker and thicker lines here and there and it's just given me a bit of an idea about the different textures that I can create, the different dynamics I can create just with some stitch. So there's some ideas to play around with. So I've picked out some of my paler greys and grey blues. I quite like this sort of duck eggy grey. It's like a silver grey. And so I've got a couple of pearl cottons and a couple of silk threads as well. I'm starting with a silk thread and what I want to do is kind of create the sense that this hill is rolling over and disappearing into the distance. So I'm just going to start off with some running stitch and I'm going to come in here. Let's start in the brow of this hill and I don't want to follow this hill here so I'm going to go almost vertically but not quite and I'm just going to put some running stitch in as my first line just faffing about trying to get an angle that I'm happy to stitch at so I've got quite a few layers here that I'm stitching through once I've got going it'll be much easier and actually if you're doing lots of running stitch you might want to use a sashiko needle which are quite a lot longer 
than standard embroidery needles but yeah the first couple of stitches I always find easier to do in two motions and my the thing that makes this a little bit trickier is my wadding on the background so because I want to create a kind of quilted feel I've got quite a lot of layers to go through so what I want to do is make my stitch length shorten and possibly the stitches get further away from each other as I get up towards the background the very distant So stitching over this is going to make my the, the pattern on that fabric more subtle. It's going to take some of the sort of strength out of that pattern. But it's also going to give a bit of a sense of movement as well. You don't want to pull too tight because you're going to cause everything to pucker. So all I'm doing is working up and down. And this is properly slow stitch now because I'm just not really thinking too much about it. Just working up and down with my silk thread. So I've got some texture going on there. So that's what I'm going to do on my furthest hill, just create some lines that sort of curve away and I might fan them so that the, this hill's going in a slightly different direction. So I'm just going to finish that off there. I just want to show you some of the other things that I'm going to do before I... just to put some texture into the background I suppose. So I've got a lovely dark variegated thread here that I wanted to use on this section here. So this one's got some natural lines in the fabric so I thought I could follow those and not overdo it. So I'm just going to maybe a back stitch make a solid line so back stitch I've got stitch tutorials I will link them in a playlist at the top just using some quite simple stitches this week back stitch you just take a stitch length forward and then come back to the end of the previous stitch so you go forward a stitch length and then back to the previous stitch you're always working back on yourself and I'm just using the natural line of the fabric here it's just the natural line of the pattern to guide where I'm putting my stitches and the pattern has got some sort of dashes on that almost look like stitches themselves so I thought we could have a bit of play with that so let's have a bit of seed stitch going on here and I, again I'm going to start with small stitches at the back in the distance and I'm going to make them slightly bigger as they come closer so seed stitch is just running stitch worked in lots of different directions it's a great fill stitch but it also adds quite a lot of texture so you can use your landscape as a little bit of a stitch sampler if you want to 
variations of running stitch or you can use whatever stitches you like I suppose but just think of ways to add texture to your piece of art and if you have had very windy weather maybe use some of those dynamic lines to create a sense that it's windy or maybe you want to create that sense of calm with those more static vertical and horizontal lines maybe you want to suggest that your landscape is a bit chaotic you could use your stitches to reflect maybe how busy you've been this week so you could make it really sort of frantic or if you've had quite a gentle week you could keep them a lot more sort of gentle and calm entirely up to you this is starting to look a little bit like a river I like that idea. So I'm going to put some seed stitch in here but I'm going to make the stitches much longer because these are closer to me. So there you go, you get the idea of what I'm doing there. So I've got my line of back stitch here and here and I'm just putting some seed stitch over the top of that that's going to get smaller as it goes back. So I wanted to just show you what I'm going to do with my water. I'm going to use some of my light effects. This is DMC thread. It's a light effects thread. I've got some white here, but I've also got a blue one. Where have I put it? Here we go. I've got a blue one that's in that sort of mid blue. And I've also got some silver. That's an anchor metallic thread that's very very fine and these are a nightmare to work with I'm not gonna lie and I recommend that you cut a short length so I've got about it's probably a bit long I've got about 30 centimeters there but that probably is too long I'm taking a single strand I've just got the white one here I've got some beeswax just a beeswax block and I'm just gonna pull my thread through it and that helps it to pass through the fabric a little bit better so what I'm going to do is I just want a ruler because I want this to be horizontal so I'm just going to put a guideline in for myself with which is my aqua pen. just going to put a guideline in so for my water, I'm going to do some long straight stitches and I'm going to mix up the colours. So I'm going to go white and silver and blue. So I'm just going to put in a long stitch here. And I'm going to vary the length of the stitches. Just to create a sense of shimmer it holds down that ribbon a little bit better as well and I'm going to leave areas of space so I'm not going to stitch absolutely everywhere and I'm just using my lines that I've just drawn as a bit of a guide to try and help me keep these stitches horizontal this will also help hide any globs of glue if you use glue it'll help hide those and help them to blend in more so there's some white lines in let's get a bit of blue then I'm going to get a single strand of my silver so you get the idea 
what I'm doing there that's going to help catch some light so I'll do a little area over here and I'll just space out leaving areas of space in between just to suggest that I don't know there's reflections of the clouds or whatever so I'm going to put a little bit more stitching in and then I'll come back and show you how I'm getting on and I'm looking at the texture of this fabric already it's got these sort of pulled sections in it and I wonder whether that would be nice to put some cross stitches in or maybe I'll just follow it let's just follow it so I'm just going to put running stitches following the line of the hill So here I'm, I'm letting the fabric suggest the tone and shade of the thread that I use. So you could do it in a very contrasting way. So you could choose threads that will stand out more if you wanted to. But I quite like the idea for my wintry wet landscape. Water tends to blend things doesn't it make things sort of blur together so I quite like the idea that my stitching is going to follow the fabric so when I get to the end I can just come back in the opposite direction so I'm just turning my work around so that it's comfortable and I'm not going to try and line up my stitches here, you can do, you get very different effects, you get almost ridges if you try and line your stitches up, but I'm quite happy for it to be quite random. So I'm just following the edge of that piece of fabric and I'm going to stitch in some parallel lines. So I thought we could have a bit of a go with some of our painted thread as well and I think I'm going to use this along the front here. We are going to use this a bit more because I think it's great to create rain. So I thought it might be nice to do some verticals here and I just want to play around with varying the spacing between my lines so let's put some of this on here so I'm going to start off with very small stitches worked quite close together And I'm not going to worry about making them too vertical or too parallel. I think they, these can be quite haphazard. I want to give a sense that there's something growing here maybe. Some foliage of some kind. And then I can have some that are a little bit more spaced out. This is quite thick thread, so taking a bit of effort to pull it through. Let's have a bit of tilt.
I quite like the effect that that's creating. It looks a lot more stark on camera, I think, than it does in real life. So I'm going to carry on along there with that. So I've got some teal thread here and I thought I could put some fly stitches in this space here and I'm going to overlap them. I really liked how they looked when they were overlapped so I'm not going to fuss too much about where they're going. So put different sizes of fly stitch so if you're not sure about fly stitch you bring your needle through go horizontally across and go down and then that creates a loop and then you rock your needle bring it up inside the loop and that pulls your stitch into a V and then you hop over and catch that V in place with a little straight stitch So making them all upright, I know I'm working to the side it, on camera, but they're all they've all got their open space at the top, and hopefully that will create a more sort of clustered feel at the lower end of this space where the V's all come to a point. So it'll be a bit darker at the bottom, lighter at the top. So what I always find, I'll be totally honest, is that every single piece of work that I make goes through a really awkward, I call it the awkward teenager phase, where um, I just am not sure. <laughs> and uh, I think that's what stage this piece is in. I'm looking at it and I just don't know. I question all my choices. I particularly am not happy with this background section here. I'm not liking the way those lines are going at all. But I'm going to just go with it. So I tend to experience has told me that if you don't like it, it's because it's not finished. And we can always do more to make a difference to the way our piece looks. So it's not finished yet, so I'm not going to like it. I am really liking the way that looks. That's That I do like. So I don't want them all really clustered together because I don't want to lose the fabric totally because it is a lovely piece of tweed that. So I'm going to leave some more spacious areas. Yeah, I really like, I really like the look of that. So you can play with the width of your fly stitch, make some wider, flatter ones and some very vertical ones. Let's have a nice wide one over here, wide and shallow. And then we can overlay that with a much narrower one and create creates almost like grasses or foliage and I'm making sure that I'm following the lines of the water that I've put in because I want that water to be horizontal I want it to be looking like it's flattened out found its level so that's 
basically the idea for this week so it's just playing around with mark making we've used some very static horizontal stitches here more dynamic straight stitches i've got some overlaid quite chaotic looking fly stitches here then i've got the sort of canther borrow style stitching following the curve of this mountain i've got my seed stitch here i've got some back stitch lines and it's just about i'm only going to focus on the land this week we'll look at our sky next week and then for the last week of january we'll look at adding some sort of more pictorial embroidery in the foreground and overlaying some of what we've done and maybe adding some embellishments as well so i'm going to carry on with that and i'll show you next week where i've got up to so this week it's really all about playing with mark making in stitch experimenting with the different effects that different stitches create and just creating some texture in the landscape that we put together last week so i hope you've enjoyed that go away play have lots of fun and lots of quiet meditative stitch time and let's come back next week do post what you create on the facebook group if you remember if you aren't yet i will put details of that in the description below and if you want to post on instagram please use hashtag fsh winging it 24 and that way it will group all of our pieces together and we can have a look at what each other's doing if you want some more projects like this i'll put a video here so that you can go on to your next stitch project when you finish with this one have a great week i'll see you soon bye